Now, if you're doing some renovation projects around a house, sooner or later, especially on bigger projects, you're most likely gonna damage a piece of Romex in your wall or in your floor. And that can be a pain in the butt to fix and especially fix it according to code. Let me give you a couple options on how you would fix that today. And also more importantly, introduce you to a new option, which is much quicker and I feel superior way to fix that without any maintenance needed. Thus, you can bury this in the wall without any need for junction boxes, which makes the job so much easier. So a common issue for homeowners, let's say you're doing something with your drywall, maybe hanging something on your drywall. And during that process, you tripped a breaker and it felt like you might have hit something. So what I'd want to do is open up the wall and be able to inspect through a small hole what damage is made. Now option number one for fixing this. So what I'm going to do is use a two gang old work box and cut that into this exact location. It needs to be lined up because we probably don't have much slack in these pieces of Romex unless you have a close service loop that you can pull through. Now with those wires so short inside the box, what are we gonna do? Well, here's where those Wago lever nuts really shine. And I don't even know how you would do these without the inline splices. And you'll see that link in the description. And if you're on your TV watching, you can actually take a picture of the QR code and it will take you to the complete list with the Wagos and all the other tools we're using. So we'll just extend out these pigtails. We have the one piece of Romex done and we'll do that to the other side. Remember to do pull tests on each one of these to make sure you have a secure connection. And then I'll take standard two wire wagos to bring those together. Remember, you could install an outlet if you wanted to in this location, but I'm just gonna put a blank to cover up our repair because now we have a safe repair. So junction box is your first option. Second option that's currently available actually comes from the manufacturer home industry. With a double wide trailer, when you bring two trailers together for one home, some circuits go between the two trailers and they needed a way to easily connect those up. So these got approved to be actually buried in the wall. They're not my favorite. Let me know after you see the installation what you think about them in the comments. And then we'll compare that to what I think is the superior splice kit. So here's how the NSI Romex splice kit works. We're gonna go ahead and install a half on each side and then those will clip together to complete the circuit. Now you'll see they have these little forks. Those actually pierce the insulation and make contact between that fork terminal and your actual copper within your conductors. That is not what I love, but that is the design of these splice kits. And the testing will show us if that increases the resistance and causes a lot of heat, which might lead to failure. Now, one thing I didn't do, you can leave your hot conductors a quarter inch longer than your ground and your neutral, but I'm cutting back the insulation and really you don't have to strip your wires. Remember, we're going to press them in and the forks will pierce the insulation, making contact between the terminals and the copper in the conductors. So the way you do this, you just take your pliers and not too aggressively, pinch that top casing on, and then there's a little cradle that presses that wire on each one of the forks. And then the screws actually do not go through the clear side, they go through the white housing side to make sure it pulls everything together and it's tight. Once you have that, all you have to do is plug each side together and you have your completed circuit. Now let's compare that to the UK's version, this quick wire splitter which has a really cool design. And although it is not made for the US market, you can see wire gauges are in 2.5 millimeters squared. That's gonna be cross-sectional area, similar to 14 gauge. So we can use the 14.2 for demonstration purposes, but hopefully Quickwire and the NEC will get together soon and approve this guy. And the insulation could not be easier. The nice thing is you actually are able to cut out a section of the wire, which can be a lifesaver if you do not have any slack. And then you'll use the quick wire wire strippers because it both can take off the jacket here, which we're stripping off 22 millimeters or almost one inch of the outside jacket. And here in the US, we have this paper cover that I have to remove. In UK, they do not. Now, while I remove that, I'll call your attention. We have the updated home maintenance checklist. Over 5,000 homeowners have downloaded that. There's a link in the description or the QR code on the screen. And that's just a quick reminder on your fridge on what you should be doing monthly seasonally and yearly, complete with those QR codes, which is gonna be your quickest reference on a full step-by-step -step process for each one of those light items. So you can go ahead and do your maintenance and get through that quickly. Now with the paper removed, we'll take the same wire strippers, just line the edge of the jaws there up with the jacket, and that will take off the exact amount of insulation from the hot and neutral. 
Now I'll pull off the installation and we're ready to go. So now we'll line up the L is actually live. That's gonna line up to our black wire or hot wire. And it is literally as easy as making sure they're straight, line them up, and then just press them into each side until you hear the click and they're fully seated. And that is it. That is what makes this such a cool design. It is so easy to install. It is secure and just a really neat design. Now there is a release tool, so if you ever need to service this, it's really easy to remove the wires and they're really usable. You're not damaging your wires, you can easily put them right back in, press it and go back to business. I'm always curious to see kind of what is inside of these outlets or these different connectors like this. So we'll take off these little detents so we can open things up. And once we see inside, there's kind of two halves. The one half has these forks here. We can see the contacts on the left hand side. And then the other half we're gonna open up. The right hand side we're gonna open up a little bit more because those forks are critical to the design. Once you press in each of the sides, we'll see how that makes then a secure connection and solid contact between your two pieces of Romex. So opening these up, then through the clear housing, each one of these wires has this small little lever on top and bottom, which would be pressed into those forks and pressed down onto the conductor. Now, come on, is that not just a way better design? Let me know down in the comments. I want to get your feedback. Put approved if you think the NEC should approve this type of wire splice within the US so we can fix that damaged Romex buried in the wall and it is maintenance free or not approved and why you do not like the design. Either way, I wanna hear your feedback. Now, if you wanna see the top 10 mistakes that homeowners are making when they're swapping out outlets, check out this video right here and I'll quickly run you through those so you're swapping out your outlets safely and according to code. And if you wanna see a little testing on wire connectors, which is just a wire nut versus a Wago 221 lever nut, my favorite, and the new Harbor Freight lever nuts, check out the video right here. We'll run some loads through them and see if those are creating any heat, which might be an unsafe condition. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on one of those next ones. Take care.